Welcome to Terracom Training Institute's online course, IP Networks, Routers, and Addresses. This course could also be called Layer 3, as it's all about Layer 3 of the OSI model, the network layer, and in particular, IP packet networks. Packet networks embody two main ideas, bandwidth on demand and packet switching. First, we'll recap channelized time division multiplexing and its limitations. Then we'll understand statistical time division multiplexing, also called bandwidth on demand. Next, we'll understand how routers implement the network with packet switching, that is, relaying packets from one circuit to another, and how routers are a point of control for network security. We'll introduce the term customer edge, and understand the basic structure and content of a routing table. Then we'll cover the many aspects of IP addressing which is needed to be able to do the packet switching. IP version 4 address classes, dotted decimal notation, static addresses, dynamic addresses, how DHCP is used to assign both, public IP version 4 addresses and private IP version 4 addresses, network address translation between the two of them, and finish with an overview of IP version 6 and IP version 6 address allocation and assignment. In this course we'll cover the following lessons. Lesson 1, the course introduction, that would be this one. Lesson 2 is a review of channelized time division multiplexing. We'll review the idea of channelized TDM, what channels are and how they can be used to aggregate traffic onto a high-speed circuit. Then we'll raise some questions. Is that an efficient way to connect devices that produce traffic in bursts, which means the devices are normally doing nothing, and yet we're assigning them a channel all the time? And what about the problem of a single point of failure for all of the traffic that's aggregated onto the channelized circuit? The subsequent lessons then explore the answers to those questions. Lesson 3 is statistical time division multiplexing, also known as bandwidth on demand. In this lesson, we'll understand how circuits that move bits constantly can be used efficiently when the user's traffic profile is idle most of the time, interspersed with bursts of data every once in a while. The answer is overbooking. This is also called statistical multiplexing, oversubscribing, and bandwidth on demand, and it's a key part of a packet network. The circuits internal to the network are heavily overbooked to give users the highest speed at the lowest cost. Now it's necessary to know the user's historical demand statistics, which is also called their traffic profile, to know how much to overbook, hence the term statistical multiplexing. You've got to know the demand statistics to know how much to overbook. Lesson 4 is bandwidth on demand and routing put together to make a private network. The purpose of this lesson is to expand the discussion of the previous lesson to include multiple circuits. The result is called a network, and a private network is the simplest framework for understanding routers, routing, network addresses, and bandwidth on demand. Lesson 5 is routers. In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at a router, more precisely identifying the functions a router performs to implement a packet network, and understand how a router routes by examining the basic structure and content of a routing table. We'll also understand how the router can act as a point of control, denying communications based on criteria including network address and port number, why this is implemented, and what its limitations are. The term customer edge, or CE equipment, is defined in this lesson. Lesson 6 is IP version 4 addresses. And here we'll understand IP version 4 addresses, the address classes, and dotted decimal notation. Lesson 7 is DHCP. In this lesson we'll cover DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and understand the mechanism by which a machine is assigned an IP address. We'll also understand how the dynamic host configuration protocol can be used to assign static addresses to machines and the advantages of doing that. 
Lesson 8 is Public and Private IP Version 4 Addresses. The purpose of this lesson is to define the terms public and private IP address, review how IP addresses are assigned and the costs for those addresses, and then cover the ranges of IP version 4 addresses that are used as private addresses and understand how and why we use private addresses. Lesson number 9 is Network Address Translation. Here, we'll explore how private IP version 4 addresses used inside a building and a public IP address required for internet communications can be joined together with a software function called Network Address Translation. Lesson 10 is an overview of IP version 6. Completing the course on IP, We'll first review the next generation of IP, IP version 6, and understand the improvements compared to IP version 4, and review the format of the IP version 6 packet and its header. Lesson 11, IP version 6 address allocations and assignment, is quite interesting. Here we examine the structure of the 128 bit IP version 6 address and we review the different kinds of IP addresses, the organizations that allocate them, and the current plans for how addresses will be assigned to end users, and how every residence gets 18 billion billion IP version 6 addresses. The objective of this course is to develop a solid understanding of IP. After taking this course, you will be up to speed on the fundamental principles of packet networks. Bandwidth on demand, also known as overbooking or oversubscription, and packet forwarding. You'll know the IP packet format and how IP addresses are allocated, assigned, and displayed. You'll know the difference between static and dynamic addresses, public and private addresses, and how network address translation works. An additional objective is to become familiar with the basics of IP version 6. In particular, on completion of this course, you'll be able to explain the concept of statistical multiplexing, also known as oversubscription, overbooking, and bandwidth on demand why and how it can be implemented and its benefits, what a private network is, what a router is and how it implements the network by connecting data links, how routers move packets between broadcast domains including VLANs, how routers also act as a point of control for traffic called packet filtering, the basic structure and content of a routing table, the customer edge, IP version 4 address blocks, class A, class B, class C, and dotted decimal notation, static addresses and dynamic addresses and how and why DHCP is used to assign both, public addresses and private addresses, how, why, and where each is used, Network address translation for interfacing domains where public addresses are used with those where private addresses are used. The improvements and changes between IP version 4 and IP version 6. And finally, the types of IP version 6 addresses, how IP version 6 addresses are allocated to ISPs, then assigned to users, and how each residence gets 18 billion billion. IP version 6 addresses. Packet networks incorporate two main ideas, packet switching and bandwidth on demand. Packet switching means relaying user data in packets from one piece of network equipment to the next. This is implemented with routers to relay packets from one circuit to another and IP addresses to determine which circuit to relay them to. Bandwidth on demand means abandoning the idea of two devices communicating over capacity that's reserved all the time for them, and instead connecting many devices to the circuit, giving each the possibility of transmitting. If a device does not have anything to transmit, another device can use the available capacity. 
Since the term bandwidth is used to mean transmission capacity, this is called a capacity on demand or a bandwidth on demand strategy. We begin our discussion of networking with private networks using private lines, also called dedicated lines or full period services, connected with routers. This is the simplest starting point for discussing packets, addresses, routers, and bandwidth on demand. We'll make the discussion much more complicated in the next course when we replace the dedicated lines with carrier packet network services, including IP managed with MPLS. We'll explain bandwidth on demand by first recapping how voice, data, and video can be aggregated onto a single high-speed circuit using channelized time division multiplexing. Then we'll turn to the problem that channels move bits all the time, but data traffic comes in bursts. How do we move it efficiently? The answer is to overbook, and this is called statistical multiplexing. Next, we'll understand how routers implement the network by relaying packets from one circuit to another, and how routers are a point of control for network security. We'll introduce the term customer edge and customer edge router. With that in place, we'll do the whole IP addressing story. Address classes and dotted decimal notation, static and dynamic addresses, DHCP, public and private addresses, network address translation, and then finish with an overview of IP version 6 and a look at how IP version 6 addresses are allocated and assigned. The course is composed of a number of lessons which are loaded onto your computer one at a time by clicking the corresponding link on the menu of available lessons in the MyTerracom Learning Management System dashboard. Each lesson begins with an overview and discussion of the lesson objectives. Then the lesson is presented in several parts, followed by several quiz questions to help ensure you understood key points. The left arrow and right arrow buttons at the bottom sides of the screen may be used to navigate back and forth between parts, and the timeline controls along the bottom of the screen may be used for navigation and to pause and to resume the presentation. You can go back through the lesson as many times as you like until you click the Finish Lesson button to move to the next lesson. You can close your browser, then log back in the next day or next month, and you'll restart the same lesson until you click the Finish Lesson button to move to the next one. Note that the Finish Lesson button doesn't appear in this free sample.